Hey, it's Dry Bear. Today, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about the Glavier Advanced Class, including how it works, its counters, stagger abilities, as well as builds, down to the abilities, the points, the stat distribution, and the engravings, plus some general tips and tricks for playing the class. If you're like me and you're super excited for this class finally coming to the West, then you're in the right place. So let's go. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. We'll start with an overview of how the class works, and then we'll dive into two different build options given the class engravings that the Glavier has. Starting with the identity, as you would expect for the Glavier, or as it's known in other regions, the Lance Master, you have a spear and a glaive that you'll use available. And similar to Gunslinger and the Deadeye, you can swap between them freely, which gives you a different move set of abilities. And you actually have an identity that's built around swapping them actively. Now, the bottom of the screen, the blue weapon is your glaive, also known as the flurry stance. And the red weapon is your spear, also known as the focus stance. In your ability kit, you've got blue web abilities here that focus on the glaive in your flurry stance and red abilities that focus and can only be used by your spear in the focus stance. And just like Gunslinger and Deadeye, you'll see the current cooldown of the abilities in the opposite stance listed on your identity bar. So while I'm in blue stance here, I can see the cooldown of the red. So if I swap to red and use an ability, and then swap back, you'll see that the build I just used is blocked out. So you can keep track of your different cooldowns between your stances. And your identity is pretty simple. It is a bar down at the bottom that naturally fills up. You can see it filling right now while I'm in the blue stance. And as I attack targets and deal damage with abilities, you'll see it fill up faster and faster. It's also cut into three different segments. And the higher you get the bar, the better the buff will be when you swap stances. So the general play style is building up that bar as big as you can, getting it to a full three segments. And then when you swap to the opposite weapon, you'll get a buff that is a correlated with how many segments you filled up. So if you swap over to focus, which is your spear stance, uh, and then you'll get a full buff off of that. And then you swap back and forth and then you want to use those abilities and swap, which lends itself to this very flowing and free play style where you're moving between abilities, using different stances and benefiting from different effects, and then swapping over to the opposite weapon and doing it back and forth, which I think feels really good. You have two awakenings, a projectile-based awakening and then a channeled attack. The projectile is uh, kind of like the gay bulk, if everyone knows what I'm talking about here. It's a ground targeted ability. You uh, target the location, activate it, a long wind up, you'll throw the weapon, it'll explode and do a ton of AoE damage at the location. The other kind of reminds me of the War Dancer Ultimate. You activate it, dash forward a little bit, and then deal a channeled attack forward, and then you'll dash forward and do a final attack. Both of them are relatively equal, and you can choose which one you prefer based on the encounter. Now, before we get into builds, let's talk your available skill set. Starting with your counter, before there is a, a build on the PTS in Korea that will add a second counter to the kit. But as it stands right now, I don't know if we're going to get that or not right away. This ability is going to be your only counter if that patch does not go live. And it's simply just called Vault. And it looks like this. It's a very fast reaction. It's got kind of close to medium range. But for any boss mechanic that has a counter, you see them glow blue, you get in front of them and you get them an up kick and that's going to be your counter. Now there is a new patch being tested right now in Korea that will make your counter in red stance actually give a counter as well, which it's almost like a parry. Um, and that will give you a parry or a counter in both blue and red stance for the stance swapping build. But I'm not sure if we're going to have that on live. So just kind of hold your breath for that. Now let's talk stagger for all the stagger check mechanics that you're going to encounter in PVE. The big thing is that majority of your stagger comes from your glaive. So you want to be in blue stance for the majority of your stagger. The only ability in red stance that has stagger on it is going to be your parry ability, where if you activate this like the gun lancer counter, if you get hit during that animation, then you'll attack back and deal damage to them. Just like that. And that does have some stagger on it, but otherwise, some of your best stagger comes from the Raging Dragon Slash, which is used in almost every build. It's an incredible ability. It is an area around you. You swing and do a slash, 
and it has mid-high stagger on it without any additional effects. Half Moon Slash is also a medium stagger as well as a level 2 part break, but this gets used a lot in many builds. It's a tornado that you spawn with very, very many different variations in it, depending on your tripods and runes, but it is a medium stagger damage. And your last one is going to be Wheel of Blades. So it looks like this when you have the tripod that I have equipped. But for typical stagger checks, you're going to run through those three abilities. You're going to drop this, flip your Dragon Slip, and then go straight into the flip here, sequencing the Raging Dragon Slash, Wheel of Blades, and the Half Moon Slash. For part break, you have several options. There's one in the red stance, which is going to be your Spiral Window or Spiraling Spear, as it's known in the West. This very quick stab here has a part one, a level one parts destruction or part break on it. Half Moon Slash has parts level two. Shackling Blue, Blue Dragon also has a level one on it, which looks like that. And Chain Slash, which you can use from a range. Now let's talk builds you can use for the Glavier. As with every other class, you have two class engravings that will determine the style for your build, and they generally lean heavily into different parts of the mechanics that this character has available. For the Glavier, you can either lean into the stance swapping with Pinnacle, which takes the buff that you get when you swap between weapons and just makes it even stronger, which scales up the attack speed, move speed, damage to enemies, and either crit rate or crit chance or crit damage that you get between which weapon you're swapping to and from. But if you prefer, you can also play with the second engraving, which is called Control. Control says, I don't want to use my focus stance, which is the spear here, and instead locks out the use of the spear entirely, leaving you only with your blue stance, your glaive, or your flurry stance, and in instead increases the damage that you deal with those flurry abilities. So today I'm going to cover two different builds, one that uses pinnacle for the stance swapping, and one that uses control for the glaive only blue stance. You'll see on screen the whole build with the abilities, the tripods, the gems, and the runes, but keep in mind that all of these are recommendations. There's gonna be subtle variations based on content that you're doing, but I provide this guide as a general guideline for people getting into the class for the first time and they just want a starting point. Starting off with Chain Slash, which is your ranged attack. It looks like this. And with this 3-1-2 build, the only thing that you should be noticing at this point is gonna be your second tripod, which does make you consume meter when you use it, but gives you a hefty damage bonus. So just keep in mind that when you're in the flurry stance building meter, that when you use your chain slash, you'll use up a little bit of your meter, but it's worth it for the extra damage. For half moon slash, which looks like this is your tornado, your part break and medium stagger. You're gonna be running with a one, three, two. And keep in mind, we're running with the tripod. It does consume the gauge here. So you'll get a lot extra damage there, but just keep in mind, that if you use it right before stance swapping, you may be losing meter. For your heavy hitter, high stagger, medium high stagger ability, your raging dragon slash, which looks like this, you'll run with a 3-2-2 ability setup. For shackling blue dragon, which is another melee range ability, you'll spin, you'll slam your spear down into the ground, just like this. And I recommend running a 3-1-1 on this. And the cool part is that with the final tripod, you do get a crit trike resistance down which is a synergy for you. So keep in mind that that is your synergy for your class. Now, if your next three abilities, they're mostly mobility and for meter building. So you'll want to save your, your points for this stance swapping build to go into uh, the two abilities in your red stance, your focus stance. And this is going to be your counter vault, which looks just like this. We talked about it earlier. Flash kick, which is one of my favorite movement abilities in the game. You'll be able to just kind of vault over the spear like this. This one is super useful for getting a little bit of distance. And if you have extra points, you can tripod it to get more distance on it. So for flash kick, you can run with one to get extra distance if you have the points. For vault, you can run with two for the extra distance. And for your last ability, you can run with stampeding slash, which has a nice benefit of giving single target damage and a little bit of movement when, it, when you activate it, which looks like this. Next, while you will have access to all of the six red abilities in your focus stance, with this build, the stance swapping build, you will be focusing your efforts and points into two specific abilities. The first one is Starfall Pounce, and this is a jump attack that looks like this. It's a great way to re-engage after an AoE from a boss, or if you move out and move back in, or just getting some distance with some slamming on it. For Starfall Pounce, I recommend going with a 1-3-2 setup. This will give you extra damage to bosses, 
as well as a cooldown reduction, which is very nice for the extra movement, plus a guaranteed crit and scaling extra crit damage as you level up the tripod. And lastly, you'll want to run Red Dragon's Horn with a solid 3-3-1. Three, three, this one takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's super powerful and useful from range. When you activate it, it is a channel with a perfect zone in it. When you hit the channel in the range, and you can aim it while you're using it. You can activate it and change the direction of it as it goes, and you hit the perfect zone, you get damage. And for this one, I, I recommend running a 3-3-1 three, three, setup. This gives you cooldown reduction on the first tier. The second tier will narrow the strike, but give you guaranteed crit. And the last will give you extra bomb boss damage. Now, what's cool is you're running the tripods for cooldown on both of these abilities. You can switch into red stance, dump these, get a bunch of damage out of them as they hit really hard. And then you can build up your meter and swap back to blue, build up your meter and swap back as well. For this build, we're gonna run a 75% specialization to 25% swiftness setup. And the reason we do this is specialization increases the buff that you get, which you're already enhancing with this specific build. And it gives you extra meter recovery, which allows you to build that meter up, get the maximum buff and swap between the weapons. And since we're already getting crit from the buff and movement speed and attack speed, we just run a little extra swiftness, which will give us more cooldown reduction, as well as the ability to position and just be more fluid during the fight. For engravings, of course, we're going to be running with Pinnacle, which is the ability to increase the buff and sets the, the tone for the entire build. And what's nice is because you're getting these big buffs built into your kit already, it gives you a lot more freedom to play with stronger engravings. So since you have built in attack speed, move speed, damage scaling, crit chance and crit damage in your buffs that are you're applying to yourself, the best way to scale this build up is going to be with raw attack power. So I recommend engravings like grudge, which will give you flat damage. Mass increase is incredibly effective because it gives you raw attack power, which scales all your buffs and scaling that you have built in. Curse Doll, same thing, more attack power. And that should make up the bulk of your build, but you can also run Keen Blunt Weapon and Raid Captain to scale off of all the extra movement speed that you have. The Keen Blunt, you're already getting crit rate in the build as well. So it's because you're getting so much foundational stats from your buffs, it gives you the ability to just scale the raw damage and attack power through your engravings. I've also included recommendations for the runes you want to run on each ability, as well as which ability should get damage or cooldown or both on your gems for your total setup as they tend to scale better with damage or cooldown or neither. And that's the pinnacle stance swapping build recommendation. Stay tuned to the end for some tips and tricks on gameplay. Now the second engraving control disables your red stance. It disables your spear. You only have the glaive but it makes your glaive abilities do more. Now, obviously, since you can't stance swap, you will not be getting the stance swapping buff that's built into your kit, uh, especially not being scaled with the other engraving. So you're gonna focus all your points, gems, and runes into your blue skill set. Now, I'm gonna recommend the same abilities that we had for the flurry stance in the last build, with one exception and distribution of points. So all the abilities are the same with the same tripods. We're just going to put more points into Stampeding Slash. This one can hit pretty dang hard once you have the tripods on it. For Stampeding Slash, I recommend running a 3-3-2 three, three, setup, which is going to give you scaling damage on both these two tripods. And the super difference is going to be on the last tripod, which removes the forward moving element of your Stampeding Slash but gives it an extra slash or two and some extra damage. And it looks like this. Now, typically with this only blue build on control, you want to have as high a swiftness as possible for several reasons. Firstly, you're going to be gated by having only eight abilities to spend, and you can't spend your cooldown time in your focus stance with your red spear. So you want to make sure you have high swiftness so that you can keep those cooldowns rolling. It also has great synergy with Raid Captain, which is going to give you an extra boost in damage. Grudge and Cursed Doll still work great here, but instead of the engravings we saw before, you're going to run with some common engravings like Ambush Master or Adrenaline. And since you have high swiftness with this build, it means you can keep Adrenaline up pretty often. And Ambush Master, should you choose to run it, gives you extra damage when attacking the target from behind. And the remaining 30% crit that you have in this, the remaining 30% stats you have in this build, you're going to go with crit, which is going to just boost up your damage even more. And that's all there is for the blue control build. Now, I will mention a bonus build that I'm, I'm, thinking is going to start becoming more and more popular 
uh, starting with Korea, is going to be an all attack engraving build based on a focus spear build for headed dragon. Now you can modify this ability, which normally is just an activated normal attack to be created into a channeled attack with a tripod on the second level, which gives you a big boost in damage, which makes it look like this. You can see how fast that hit uh, hits and how much damage that does. It can even apply a bleed when you have the extra bit here. Now this tripod here is getting a pretty sizable buff in Korea in the next balance patch. Again, I'm not sure if this is going to be included in our first version of Glavier when the release comes out tomorrow, but it is an option to run with all out attack as a uh, it increases damage done by channeled abilities with charge abilities. And you can run in and do this. And I think this is going to be a super satisfying, fun build to run with that we're probably going to see more of in the coming months. Now, I've created cheat sheets for each of the builds as well as a cheat sheet that shows both builds on one screen. You can keep open on your second monitor or on your phone to keep track of how you want to spend your points or how you want to build your Glavier. And you'll find those links down in the description and in the comment section. Now, let's talk about some basic tips and tricks and gameplay advice to help you get started with your Glavier. Now, if you're running the control build with high swiftness, you'll still feel incredibly fast. But if you compare the pinnacle build with high spec, you'll find that she plays a little bit in the medium range of speed. But what's cool is she actually has a good amount of stagger immunity and super armor built into her kit, plus the parry, which allows you to stand your ground when you're in an encounter. Things like wheel of blades, especially when you have the double track on there, does have stagger immunity on it. Raging Dragon Slash has stagger immunity, so if you want to attack through some minor attacks and hold your ground, you can. And some of your movement abilities that we added into the kit to make it feel more fluid when you're in your flurry stance, like your counter, as well as your vault, both have stagger immunity on them. So you can use those at the right time to take partial hits and still not get stopped when you're moving around. And as you get more comfortable with the stance swapping, if you're running Pinnacle build, you can start utilizing a lot of the movement that's in the kit right now. You can use the vault in your blue stance to get some distance, move forward with the stagger immunity that you have on your wheel of blades like this. And in focus stance, you can use Starfall Pounce for mobility as well, jumping over mechanics or avoiding hits. And there's a lot you can avoid using the parry dragon scale defense, which works just like the gun lancer parry. You activate it right before you get hit. You'll absorb most of the hit. It actually has a lot of HP on it you can absorb with it and for many attacks even boss mechanics like aoe's and ground strikes you can activate it right before the hit to avoid that singular hit and stay where you are which makes the glavier very unique in her playstyle. and once we get the balance change that allows the dragon scale defense to cause a counter for bosses as well it gives us an option to counter with that or with our vault when we're in the flurry stance another cool trick is swapping to the right weapon when you have to break specific hit requirements so if you run into ob objects that have just a set hit limit like they need to be hit 10 times to be broken and there's no damage they always take one damage or if you have a teammate that gets stuck inside a mechanic where they get cc'd and you have to attack them to break them out of it i highly recommend just switching to your focus stance if you have that build you can see that the glaive is moderate in speed but if hits are your most important and you're running the stance swapping build switch over to focus bring out your spear and what I love about this is the hits come very fast and they also do not have a break in them. It's continuous. So you can actually just, you know, roll over. Say this scarecrow over here just got caught in a mechanic. I can jump over there, switch to my spear and just start breaking them out with ease. It's one of my favorite things about the Glavier. And a good reminder that if you are running into a stagger check, you only have one ability on your red bar that has stagger on it. So just make sure you're switching over to your flurry stance. If you have stand swapping, of course, if you're in the control build, this doesn't really apply to you because you're always in your stagger setup and you want to use your highest stagger abilities to break that. And that's it. I hope that's plenty of information to get you started with your Glavier. Congratulations on finally getting here. And if you're watching this video, you're probably playing a Glavier right away. And so will I. So enjoy. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.